and we are back welcome everyone we've had a great day so far okay bit of echo there maybe okay it seems to sort itself out so that's okay um so we've had a, a great day so far we've been talking about TikTok content how to build a channel we've been talking about just now uh, a bit more moving on to influencers and we're going to continue our discussion now with our wonderful panel here today so please give them a big virtual welcome to the stage so i'm going to ask each of them to quickly introduce themselves and a warm-up question which you can answer yourselves in the chat if you like is for them is what's been your go-to netflix or other streaming platform series or show to, to get you through the last six months um have you got any recommendations i share mine we were watching ozark uh, that kind of finished that kind of kept us going a few series um i think i'm hunting around for a new one now so uh, maybe we'll kick off uh, with alessandro well many <laughs> so you know i've been uh, difficult uh, but uh, i'd say um other is good one and lately i'm watching something that is like also entertaining like and we need to see it's called uh, sheet click um it's a nice one on netflix so highly recommended and can you just give us a, a brief intro to yourself sure i am Alessandro Bogliari. i am the ceo and co-founder of the influencer marketing factory um and it's a global influencer marketing agency i'm based in new york we will have people in london and in europe and here in the states and we mostly help brands get in front of a gen and millennials on tiktok instagram and youtube great and uh, harriet yeah hi name my name's harriet um i'm cmo of a games publisher called playstack um we're based in london but uh we we've, we've got employees uh, all over the world um uh the majority of our portfolio is, is mobile games, although we have released a very successful console game recently. Um, and uh, my go-to show on Netflix is probably uh, Parks and Recreation, which um, is a fairly old uh, uh, comedy, a little bit like The Office. But um, yeah, that's been kind of getting me through through these endless days. Okay, and Tim? Hey, um, Timothy Amu, I'm the CEO of Fanbyte. Uh, started just over three years ago. We are a 50, 52 person agency now across seven different countries, um, helping brands like King, Ubisoft, Miniclip, all these guys to reach uh, audience on TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, in terms of Netflix, um, it's kind of a multi-pronged, multi-pronged answer. First of all, I've been I enjoyed the Last Dance by um, the one about Michael Jordan. I think everyone pretty much loved it. Um, and the second one is actually um, is, is actually myself. <laughs> um, we are actually um, doing a documentary with Netflix because uh, we just I don't know if we're going to touch on this. But we started something called the Bite House, where we got like eight TikTokers to live under one house. And um, Netflix have just asked us to turn it into a show. So I've been watching videos of how it would look on Netflix. So that has been uh, that has been what I've been watching on Netflix, I guess. Okay, great. So, Alessandro, so you're, you're running this agency, Influencer Marketing Factory, I guess, uh, starting off on probably other platforms, uh, maybe, I guess, YouTube and I, I think, you know, Instagram, I guess. You know, what, what made you hop onto TikTok and, and uh, how, how have you found that? Yeah, sure. Good question. And by the way, I hear my voice a bit back. I don't know if these are the settings uh but um long story short yes i mean like we were working of course like on youtube uh, and um, instagram but uh, two years ago actually when not a lot of people knew about you know tiktok it was still like you no know, like going from like what was musically dances and young people to what it's like TikTok now 
we saw a big opportunity and uh, we said, okay, this is going to be a big one thing because uh, especially with the organic reach going down and increasing a lot on Instagram, we wanted to give to our clients um, new opportunities to get on like in front of uh, different like type of people. So in a different way, it was like less pushy and pitchy and sales, but uh, more entertaining. We saw a big opportunity then. Our first client was actually two years ago with Sony Music. We did one of the first like, you know, um dances uh, plus hashtag challenges together it went super viral well, millions of views we saw the big opportunity there and then we got into like in touch with of course like other major music labels for a music group universal music and then after that we got in touch with many other amazing brands um and so long story short yes i mean like after we saw that we still offer also instagram and youtube but what we can see in terms of uh, virality um and also type of engagement uh, on TikTok, whenever we see that, and so after that, we become one of the top of mind, especially here in the States. Uh, for TikTok, we offer that every single day to uh, Fortune 500 clients and new clients are really happy by that. And again, we believe it's from day one. A lot of people say it just keep up. It's a big opportunity, big potentials, and so here we are now. Great. And Harriet, you also had uh, in a previous career working in the music industry. I guess this would have been a good channel to have uh, back in, in those days. And uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's there's so many hits coming through. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, there's what, obviously a lot of uh, success happening in in the industry through music. There. Yeah. And now you're you're working in the game space. So you know what what made you. You know, you've got a huge amount of channels and games. It's super sophisticated. You know, people are spending you know millions and millions a month. You know, in in many cases, um, every channel is is being explored. What what made you look at, at TikTok? I think um, you know we're just always, as you say, we're always looking for new channels um, and where to find you know where to find a new audience. Um, and I think the great thing about TikTok is the fact that it does feel very organic. Um, so it's uh, it's it's really having you know a player being able to speak to another player, and and be an advocate for that game in a very natural and and fun way. Um, the execution that you can you know the the way that you can convey the game on there is obviously going to be yeah just a lot more natural than watching an advert on another channel. Got it. And do you do you see this as part of your overall influencer marketing uh, channel, or is this more you you look at it as as by platform, so Facebook, TikTok? I think I think we see it by platform, really. Um, and and we're looking for um, how competitive it can be as a platform versus the other platforms that we use. Um, but I think that we are generally finding that the audience that come through it is uh, is is a more committed audience and is a more um, uh, you know higher higher quality audience if you like um, because of the way that they've come come to discover a game in this very sort of natural peer to peer way. Got it. And so you've probably seen this with a few platforms before. Do you think this is the kind of Goldilocks period if you like with TikTok and? everyone's getting organic reach or you know and, and as a as a as a brand this is this is you know you're you're in there at the right time this is great and it's going to sort of downhill from here or do you see sort of further growth ahead i think there's still you know there's still a huge amount of growth ahead and um it will become a part of um, this particular generation's life in the same way that for an older generation, obviously it's been Facebook or it's been Instagram. So for this younger generation, they, you know, it, it, I think it will just continue to embed itself within their, their daily routine and their daily life. Because I think you, if you demonstrate that you get in there early enough into um, somebody's sort of lifestyle and psyche or whatever, to a, to a great extent then obviously that that becomes a part of their identity a part of their profile that they'll go on to use for for many many years to come in the same way that you know youtube has been so such a big part of people's lives that are that sort of older generation 
Great. Okay. And Tim, uh, we have known you for a while. You've been in this space for quite some time. You were really early on to Snapchat. You're really early on to TikTok. You're really early into inference and marketing. So, you know, what what's sort of fan bites up to now? You know, where, where's your sort of focus at the moment? Um, yeah, it's funny. You say that and you make me seem like super old, but I'm just like 24 and it's just like, oh, you're really early into this. I'm like, Jesus Christ, James. Um, uh, so, so, um, so for us, um, TikTok, so our whole remit, if you go on our site, it, it literally says it point blank. Um, we do one thing very well, and that's to help brands reach a Gen Z or this. Like that's, that's kind of the thing that we say. And, you know, and so about 18 months ago, um, a number of our brands, actually, this was Nickelodeon, actually, we were working with them on Snapchat and stuff. They're like, oh, you know, go, like, we've seen this TikTok thing and people in the office had been using it um, quite a bit, but they were like, hey, we've seen this thing, can we explore it? Um, so we started to explore it. And, um, and again, as people have said, it was, we saw the reach and all that stuff then. That was pretty cool. I think for us, we kind of thought a bit deeper. So we've seen this happen with Snap, seen this happen with Instagram, as you as you very rightly said, that people basically, you know, there's a big period of reach and then it, 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 it kind of just becomes a pay to play game. So sure, the, so there are three reasons why we started going into the whole TikTok world. The first one was, of course, we saw the opportunity for brands to reach that audience there and where the audience goes that's where we go um but the second thing is actually very similar to what harriet was saying is there's almost this ecosystem this like completely different world on tiktok which you can't actually find anywhere else and we saw that as a very good opportunity to actually um, take the creators there and turn them into their own kind of businesses think about zoella as a business think about pewdiepie as a business so not only did we go in there for just you know the the campaigns we then set up a different division of the business called bite-sized talent where we exclusively manage like 40 of the biggest tiktok stars in the country and we've been able to get them to like grow actual businesses from it um, so for us, it was kind of a combination of those two things. Yeah, there was the organic reach in there, but as a company whose sole focus has been on Gen Z, we thought rather than just doing brand campaigns, why don't we actually sign on these people as well so we can actually build real defensible IP from, um, from, uh, from this talent. And TikTok has enabled us to do that um in spades as well so those really have been like the two contributing reasons why we've been able to 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 why we focused on tiktok as a platform great okay so let's let's talk about influencers on tiktok how do you segment uh the tiktok influencer market in terms of the different types of influencers the the you know the the geos the theme so alessandro if, if i'm coming to you for a campaign uh you know what there's this whole universe of influencers out there it does seem like the wild west you can have you know kids in their bedroom with millions of followers uh even big established influencers on other platforms are absolutely nowhere so how do you how do you think about this influencer ecosystem on on tiktok yeah, sure. Good question. So first of all, I think that is like important that, you know, everyone knows that there is like, you know, the straight TikTok and then all TikTok, right? So depending on which type of brand or product or app do you want to, you know, promote, you really have to understand like, you know, what is the TikTok you want to go for? The most one that nowadays is more and more like, you know, solid. And those channels are more like, you know, maybe meme culture, pop culture, different like, you know, references to the rest of the world, to TV shows, to music, you know, like, so there are so many sub layers on, uh, on TikTok that are so fascinating and interesting to look into. 
But first of all, when it comes to brand deals and find the right influencers, it's super important to, is as in any other type of channels, got in a professional way, understanding the KPIs of the client and the needs, the goals, the budgets, and depending on the geolocation, we so many differences between, for example, you know, something like UK and something like US. Uh, I'm Italian, so sometimes well to do like, you know, some work in Italy. And that also, it's a different type of TikTok. I must say that TikTok in Italy is still like TikTok in the US two years ago on something, you know? So it's also interesting to see where where are the um, influencers located and based on that, how also the brands are used to see TikTok in a different ways. So after uh, understanding all those type of information, it's pretty important. You know, you, you are to look into, of course, like the demographics, the ton of voice also that you want to look into a TikToker. Some TikTokers are great, super entertaining, but may not work well for that specific product or brand, right? Because they talk in a different kind of voice and they might not be matching with uh, what is the brand values of certain companies. So some TikTokers are perfect to get to millions of people, but maybe not do that marketable, right? For companies. Uh, and some others maybe do less like numbers, but they are better in terms of conversion rates, for example. So once you understand all that and you talk and you really try to do like a work together with the brands, I would say that one of the major differences is that if we were used to see uh, something like, you know, um, let's say on Instagram, you know, the brand says, I want to do this. And usually they Instagrammers were used to mostly execute the campaigns, right? They're showing out a product and things like that. So really hard selling type of thing. On TikTok, there is always this uh, storytelling where you try to create with the with the influencer, with the TikToker, right? So um, it's important to find the right answer. You can talk with them, create a storytelling together because you have to trust that the influencer, right? That they are the ones that uh, you know uh, they really can actually understand their own audience, right? So after that, it's super important to understand again what the right people. Once you find them, it's all about the execution and of course, like as you do also in Instagram and YouTube, all the reporting, all the tracking, all the analytics set to calculate the ROI. So um, this is mostly how we work both in Europe and also in the States. Great. Um, Alessandro, I think it's your Apple earbuds. The sound isn't quite so great. You might want to switch to using the input from the uh, laptop potentially as your mic. Um, okay. I think it's maybe the Bluetooth. Uh, so Harriet, you know, how, how do you see this, this influencer market, you know, from your perspective on games? I guess you've got a lot of, you know, maybe people or accounts specifically focused on games. Uh, you know, we've also got, you know, different different types of general influencers. How are you approaching this whole pool of people you could work with? I mean, we are, we are using um, agencies to help us to obviously, you know, filter through the, the amount of influencers and to find the ones that are really right for the game that we've got at the time. Um, but, you know, for us, it's working really well, because as long as you know that the influencer plays mobile games or, you know, is interested in that particular genre, then it's kind of over to them. And, I, you know, especially... Uh, given various lockdowns and that kind of thing, it's been just brilliant to be able to uh, supply lots of assets from the game. So obviously you've got lots of cool characters, lots of cool like animations for the game, be able to supply those to the influencers, knowing that they've played the game, obviously that that needs to be something that, uh, you know, that is a request on our side. But after that, the brief is just really open um, because obviously they're, they're creators. So you want to allow them to be able to, to, to get all that content and just and just do something really fun with it. Great. And how, but yeah, how, we are using um, agencies to help. And have you have you identified any sort of groups or segments where you say yeah micro influencers or mid size influencers or you know how do you sort of think about them? We, we do predominantly go after the, the smaller influencers. Um, we find that that just allows us to um, experiment more with, you know, and allows the budget to go a little bit further um, because obviously you don't know who's going to have the greatest, you know, who's going to make the greatest connection with their audience. So being able to have, you know, quite a broad range of influencers, provided they're all gamers, um, has, is, is definitely the approach that we take. Great. 
And Tim, finally, how, what's your view on on how to understand the influence of market market on TikTok, and yeah, so, how is that different from other sort of platforms, if at all? Yeah. So I think in general, when I talk to the team, um, often they so they realise a few distinctions. So on TikTok, one of the things that I find is you. So you firstly start off with what is the interest of the audience? And then once you've looked at all the various interests, then you dig in a layer deeper to then look at who has the necessary influence in that particular um, audience. And so, but the key in general is, so one of the things, and we actually created a course about this. Um, one of the things is that on TikTok, the thing that is favored is not so much the fan base of the person, but how good the actual content is. Because by optimizing on the content, it gets shown further into the algorithm and then it has a higher propensity to then take off, i.e., you know, go viral as what well, as what um as what people say. So we built this tool where the whole idea was you can track when influencers are just about to grow or they're growing because they've hopped on a trend and stuff. This is not directly possible on things like Instagram where you start off with the interest first and then you just look at people who are macro influencers or micro influencers. We tend to find that the best thing is almost to go for the people who are just on the cusp of um, growth and it's very easy to see that not only from just like software, but just looking at it. Um, the other thing I would say for marketers who are trying to reach an audience on TikTok is you can actually engineer um, virality quite a bit. So what I mean by that is we know how the algorithm works. We know things like um, watch time, comments, um, uh, shares, um, replay rate. So often in a lot of cases, especially on TikTok, you can work with an influencer who doesn't have a huge amount of fans, let's say 100K or something like that, which on TikTok, trust me, is nothing. <laughs> like people, sh people shoot up to millions very quickly. And what we've done in the past, and this was actually something we did with Mortal Kombat, um, where we got them to create a video in a specific way and that way um, meant that that actual video ended up outperforming all their other videos so and obviously that led to more engagement and more insults for mortal kombat so the key difference i'd say especially like TikTok compared to other things is sure working with the right influencers is true but actually it's more about the style of the content that that influencer creates which would actually give it even more boost so for example if you're creating a piece of content and the call to action is like tag um five friends that you think would enjoy this app or who do you think would absolutely fail at this or um, you include in the caption where in the video content, they have to wait until the very end to like see what actually happens. All these things contribute to the video being shown to more people. And so to any brand, you can go and say, yeah, 10,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds generally will get you say, to like two million views you can engineer the way that you create the content for each of the influencers so you end up getting like four million views right so that i think is one of the key distinctions between the influencer approach not only on like compared between TikTok and instagram it's not just about the reach of that particular influencer it's actually also more about the type of content that you um, lay on top of it which would then end up like seeing that get more views and you can end up paying the influencer even cheaper because what you're doing is you're saying we will work with you to get you maximum views rather than just relying just on um, your audience there so i think that there's just like a very key distinction which 
a lot of people in the space, they just go brand influencer, here you go. They don't think about the role that content actually plays. And in, in terms of discovering those influencers, um, is, is the are people using the creator marketplace? Is that a good channel? Uh, are people using other third party tools or sort of manually doing it? Uh, Alessandro? Oh, what, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Better? Yeah, that seems a bit better. Yeah. Okay. We'll blame um, we'll blame Apple and uh, for selling these expensive uh, headphones. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, first time I've been bothered with that. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, there are different ways, of course. There are uh, free ways, of course. I still can hear my voice back. Uh, um, that may be the echo. Um, John, you hear from the from the crowd. This has okay. I hear my voice back. First time we've got anything, so. Uh. Um, I mean, I can trip in if you want. Um, no, I don't want to. It's still bad. Uh, um, maybe switch back to the the head. To view, the, have the headphones and the uh, sound. Can you do the the uh, maybe the mic? Um, yeah. Um, well, I don't want to drop this, so maybe the team will. Okay, before okay, me. Well, you chip in and we'll, we'll see if we can, yeah, yeah. We'll try again with the, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so with that, so I think there's probably two things you can do, right? So first is actually like spending time in the platform, et cetera. Um, but um, we, so there's two ways we do it, you know, yeah, you can use things like the creator marketplace that's that that's good i think what that does is it does a very good job of telling you the people who are already verified and, and stuff like that so if for example you're looking for you know the regular people right so like the people who everyone um uh tends to use and stuff that's cool um we ourselves built our own tool it's called bite sites um so you can probably see there's a theme here like Fan bites, bite size, bite size, just bites, bites, bites the whole way through. Um, so we built our own tool where we can like search the interest and growth rates and follow accounts and all that stuff. So we, for example, again, go in the Mortal Kombat thing, we could just find everyone who's talking about Mortal Kombat and like um, go in there. If you don't have that type of tool, I think there is no replacement for just actually like spending time on the uh, on the platform itself. This is if you are like a niche kind of marketer. If it's more general, I think the creator marketplace is a good way to start. Um, what I've just found is generally for like scale. So how do you take someone from, you know, zero to 250,000 installs? I found that what you need to do is just either get stuck in or use some kind of like like third party software which can do it at scale because the criteria to be on the TikTok creator marketplace I think is quite limited so you don't get like every single person you tend to get more of like the squeaky clean brand safe people who are very good if you're like a L'Oreal or someone like that who the focus is brand engagement, brand sentiment, but it was more like huge scale, that um, type of thing. Then I found that um, different ways tend to work. Great. And uh, Harriet, any thoughts on discovery for influencers? Are you using uh, the creator marketplace, are you using third party tools? Are you sort of relying on a the agency to give you uh, some suggestions? Yeah, really relying on the, on the agency's help. Um, I mean, as you know, as we, we grow as a company, there's the potential to have in-house resource to to be able to get, you know, as you say, much more uh, deeper into the platform and really understand who who the influencers are that we could work with on a consistent basis. Um, that's something that we've done in other on other platforms. You know, we've built up relationships with specific influencers that we know are kind of going to be working with us for the long term. Um, but initially, as we're starting out uh, and, and we're, we're just sort of trialing different things, we, we are reliant on agency help more. 
Great. Okay. So I've got a few more questions, but let's let's dive in some questions from the uh, in the chat since since we've already got nine. Uh, let's let's kick off, Alexander. I think I think it we might it might not be fair to blame your your kids, friends. It might just be an issue with with Wi-Fi or whatever. But I mean, I think you, we can sort of understand you. So just you please feel free to chip in, and uh, you know we'll we'll um, I'm I'm sure it'll sort of seems like you're, you're reconnected now, so it should be fine. So let's do some questions. So Rina is asking to start off a TikTok or influencer campaign for a brand would you would you first go for your sort of brand's TikTok page and content I guess in Harriet's case might be for a specific game or, or title or something like that or would you start going through influencers or do you have to do both simultaneously so let's try again can I yeah can you go for it. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna try yeah so there is actually an interesting question so on the contrary of other social media, uh, you don't really have to actually be present on TikTok. If you want, you can also, like we saw amazing results without a TikTok page. So yeah, you can also like go and create content for, for TikTok and your own branded page if you want. But um, again, since the biggest part it is the influencers and their content, they can get viral, not based on the numbers, not based on previous content. Some contents can just explode. And go to the for you page from one mom to the others we saw amazing clients uh, in like campaigns without the brand page so you don't really need that um yeah i probably i agree with that i think one of the things you can do is also if you wanted to build if you wanted to build your own page um what you should do is rather than doing it in-house what i suggest you do is almost contract specific influencers to almost be like the face of your brand so i mentioned earlier that we have this division where we exclusively manage these guys bite-sized talent all that they do is pretty much be ambassadors for different brands who they just take over their actual page and they consistently grow that um, paid for them whilst then being able to use not only them but other influencers to then do the virality and to then push out from an awareness um, perspective so generally you know because I know some brands are like do we need to have an in-house page do we need to do that etc and um, definitely you don't need to be the person or you don't even need to have an in-house team doing that we found significantly way more success when you work with you know three to five influencers who can be the face of your brand there's so many people who've done this very well you know whether it's boohoo or plt you know we've worked with quite a few brands who they've gone we want to grow our page and then we've just helped grow that not by getting them to do stuff but just get three to five influencers to just create stuff for you so that's um, generally the approach I found to growing a page. If you want to do it on a longer term basis, if I was an app, would I grow a page? Not really, if I just had like a singular app, but if I was like, you know, a, a mini clip or like a king or something like that, where I have several different apps, I, I, I'd probably do it because I think there's very clear opportunities for cross pollination. And Harry, how have you dealt with that? With you know, you've got a big portfolio of games and, and brands. You know, how, how are you are you investing in your own channels or just working through influencers? We do, we're just working through influencers. Yeah, we've we've had conversations about setting up our own page, but at the moment, that's not something that we've done. Um, and um, we've we've had success. Um, as Tim said, we've we've had lots of success just with influencers. Um, uh, you know promoting promoting a particular game obviously the thing that's important to us is, is installs of that game that that's the most important thing so um just uh, pro, you know promoting uh the game getting people to go to the app store and download it is what we're interested in really as opposed to um building a particular um page on tiktok for that game it's just more about driving people to the app store 
Got it. And someone's asking, well, how how can you get an effective ad message out through an influencer within such a short time frame, you know, 15 plus seconds? So I guess, yeah, what sort of formats work well for, for an influencer ad on TikTok? I mean, that massively depends on what the app is and what the game is, right? Um, the key thing is, I guess, not to make it seem too much like an ad, but that's a very generic answer I know. And I often hate when people give generic answers. It's like, oh, it depends. It's like, well, yeah. Um, um, so I think that the key thing is not to make it seem like an ad. Generally, you kind of don't want to say like, 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 yeah, I don't know the best way to explain it, but you'd know when you see it, basically, like, it doesn't make sense to make it seem too much like an ad if the influencer can just almost seem like they are already playing the game, playing the app, including other people. Um, this works well. Um, yeah, I think the key is not to make it seem too addy. I know that's very generic. Can I add something on that? Uh, so it also depends, like, I think that if it is like apps, yeah, like, you know, you have to have a call to actions, but we like physical products sometimes, uh, for example, what we did for, I don't like, you know, Messi or some other clients that are like more in the retail space. You don't even, uh, like, it's not even, it's used and embedded into the video in an interesting way. So you actually, you don't really try this now. You're going to use it for something to the people. And maybe in the message section, there is going to be like about the brand. But that's how that works that well, you know, because if it's still an ad, you have to disclose that, of course. But in that way, it's not a hey, buy this, because especially gen that they don't like it to more to click banners that they want to be said what to do and what to buy. But if you put it in a nice way where it's entertaining, I'm gonna share it with my friends because I'm sharing the content because of the content. But in that in that moment, you know, I'm also actually sharing the message of the brand and increase the like you know the, the CSO line. If um just on a point, if anyone wants to, so the team, the content team came up with a report called "What Makes You Install," and they actually just looked at all the um, creators on TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram as well as to what makes people install an app. If you want to get that, just like shoot me a. Uh, LinkedIn um, invite and I'll just like uh, send it over to you but it covers a lot more of it because it's quite a big question right <laughs> um, it's quite hard to answer in like two minutes got it yeah and a few more questions but I from... think just to answer that um, I was going to say that somebody has to have an idea of what it's going to be like for them if they if, if they download and if they install yeah. that they have to in that 15 seconds they have to get an indication of what they would be doing and what the experience would be like for them otherwise they're left feeling quite confused um so as long as within that 15 seconds they get an indication of what it would be like for them to, to play that game or have that app then that, that's that's obviously quite important okay and a couple of people asking about you know sort of calls to action and links and tracking and how do you actually turn this into a you know a sale or a download any any thoughts on that um i think pretty similar to what harrod said give them at least some idea of what is to happen or what the app is i know there are some app companies who <laughs> get away with ads which are completely unrelated um and then you download into something else um, but generally, if you give them some idea of it, um, then people would end up doing it. I mean, uh, with ads, you just can very easily click and go and install. If you were just doing it very organically, you can do link in bio um, as well. Generally, link in bio is fine. There is a lot of debates about how long you should be doing it for. Um, so as in, should you be doing it for a day, two days, a week? That differs um, a, a lot based on what the app is. Sometimes the app will just get scale in two days. Okay, and 
what about budget so what what you know harriet what what sort of and uh, alessandro maybe what 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 sort of budgets do you need to play in the space per campaign or or um how do you sort of think about investment so from our perspective we we Please, I you go. Um, I was going to say that. <laughs> Alessandro. <laughs> go on, give it a go, right? We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll type the answer afterwards, right? <laughs> so, budgets, Alessandro. Yeah. So, long story short. Um, so, I'd say that uh, in Europe it's a bit cheaper. For sure, because there is a I mean, less influencer, and I'd say also the demand offer I'd say is less than in the states. Uh, we'll say here at least for our for our agency, it is mostly a minimum of ten thousand dollars as minimum just to get enough results and make it proper for the agency. Um, in Europe, uh, you say like you maybe you can pay seven k something like that. But again, it's really depends on the type of product. Uh, so for us, it's a bit like, you know, easier sometimes because it's more installs. When it comes to maybe like product, since we also like maybe uh, work with physical products, it's a bit higher because the call to action is a bit more difficult. It is like a buy, like in e-commerce. But I'd say that those are the minimum price because the, the demand and offer uh, is going so like crazy here in the States, especially. So I'd say that that is the minimum right now to run uh, like an effective campaign. Yeah, I think just, can I go, Harriet? Is that, is that right if I go? Oh, okay. um, yeah. yeah, so I think, um, so for performance led uh, brands, which I presume the fact that you guys are here as app marketers means that you're trying to optimize for some kind of um, conversion. Um, what we tend to do when it comes to pricing is actually not just go with like a blanket price. What we tend to go is, um, so we think about it as like a full funnel. And again, this is what I would advise to anyone who is trying to optimize for performance, whether you're an app or you're a game or you're an e-commerce brand. Um, what we do is we actually split the campaign into two and we go, um, this is going to be for that top of the funnel, drive a lot of, clicks, et cetera, et cetera. But then we've, we've got a new, but then we then um, retarget people using the paid ads um, on, on, on um, TikTok. So we found that works exceptionally well because rather than going again, rather than going here is X budget, we're going to drive you these views and these are going to be what the clicks are going to be. Um, what we tend to do or the clicks or the or the expected installs are going to be what we do is we work backwards and we say let's actually um, split it into two different packages one of them is just to drive the first um, level of both awareness and installs but then retarget the people who have clicked and retarget them with paid ads which are directly driven to conversion and that's the way that i would always advise anyone optimize it for performance the reason for this is very simple is because us in this chat you know unless you know we have a bunch of vc money that can grow and grow and grow and grow we are aimed i oh know we are aiming for one dollar to equal two dollars because if that works then we just keep spending and spending and spending Organic influencers get you that to some extent, but when you tie it with paid, when you tie it with specific retargeting, that's when you can really, really scale. So we've seen several examples of people being able to do that because beforehand, what used to happen was people would go, cool, here is 15K, here's the campaign. And it's like, well, you've, you've just exposed the brand to like 2 million people. You've got 30,000 people have clicked through, why are we not retargeting those 30,000 people? And it's often because people go, well, it's an influencer campaign. 
But I think for TikTok, there is a very clear approach to be able to combine the influencer and the paid. So that's how we always kind of think about budgets for campaigns, what um, what um, goes into where and how that whole kind of um, system um, works as well. Harriet, you may have looked. Um, um, I, was, I, yeah. I, was, I was just going to say that we have, um, we, we normally have like a test budget at the start um, just to see whether we're getting the installs from uh, from that particular campaign um and then and then we scale after that so we've normally allocated around uh around 2k to that test scenario um with a view to obviously scaling up to you know the, the numbers that alessandro was talking about and, and beyond um but obviously it's good to to separate out the campaign to start to see how it's performing initially before pouring in the money yeah and the great thing, I guess, of doing that whole test, but also like that whole organic and paid is it actually then becomes quite easy to scale as CPI scales, which is one of the key things, I guess, as apps people like our whole thing is, you know, CPI, CPI. And it's very difficult for people to go and go, yeah, cool, we're just going to do CPI right from the beginning. But once you tie in those two things, both a test, but then the paid and organic, we've been able to like scale with brands on a CPI basis just over and over and over again. So generally for you guys, if you're activating campaigns, that approach, test first, but then in a secondary thing, do that whole like organic and retargeting, it just works like a dream. Great. Okay, well, we've been we've we've covered a lot of ground. There's still a few more questions. Uh, sorry, Karina. I don't think we're going to get to that. Maybe you can drop uh, Tim or Alessandro or, or um, Harriet a line uh, on that. So sorry we can't get through to that. But I think we've covered quite a lot of ground. So thanks, guys, for taking part today. Really appreciate it. Closing question to you all: On a scale of one to ten one being incredibly low 10 being incredibly high how positive are you about TikTok as a marketing channel over the next in in two years time harriet um i feel i feel positive about it for this new generation coming through as i said because i think it's a part of their their life their lives so I'm going to put it at an eight uh, with the caveat that obviously whatever happens from a data and, and legal perspective is is obviously still a bit of an unknown. Okay, Alessandro, scale of one to ten. <laughs> Eleven. I just want to talk. I mean, uh, um, you, you spend hours later. The content is amazing. I love meaning I mean culture. I love all the references. It's just like uh, the time that I spend on it and the different type of proof that I see, it's amazing. It's inclusive. No one judges you because of the color of your skin, because of your accent, because of anything. So it's amazing in that way. And again, as I said, it's like by regulation. Our days here in the States, I like these. It's a lot of posters of emotion. One day we are happy because it's going to stay. The day after, it's going to be banned. But uh, yeah, I just, I just love it. So 11 for me. Um, and yeah, for me, uh, nine um but before i before i explain i just want to say donald trump is an idiot and he's doing this just so he can become richer but anyway um so so um yeah so for me i think um great um for me i think as a marketing channel it's if you just ask it just as a marketing channel i'd say yeah like eight out of ten I think the make I think the thing that makes it nine out of ten is actually a question which Anthony just said was we are also seeing I think there's immense value in um, taking some of the TikTok creatives and influencer stuff and then using it as content for your other social channels. So whether it's on Instagram stories or um, or you know like well. Facebook or now we've seen every platform has stories. So YouTube stories, Pinterest stories. Um, we we are able, like we've seen so much success with um, brands actually taking the TikTok content 
and then running it as paid ads on their other socials. And so when you combine the fact that not only is TikTok a good platform for running marketing on, but suddenly it's also become a very good source of content for other social channels where so many brands are struggling to create ads, suddenly you're like, wow, this could literally underpin my entire marketing um, strategy. And when you think about it like that, um, that's when it gets um, very, very strong. And that's a little hack, I guess I would suggest to people here is if you want to start thinking about it as just not a TikTok campaign, but actually how can I use the assets there? Because no one will create the level of cool content as on TikTok and then use it for other channels. You would, your like your minds will be blown. Like we've done it for mini clip and ubisoft and all these guys and they're like jesus christ like the content is so different that it would just stand out a lot more than other people so that's why i give it a nine and ten okay so the average my math's probably not that good we've got a nine uh slightly illegal 11 and an eight so i guess that brings us to 28 divided by three so a solid nine and a bit out of ten in terms of feature platform. So, uh, yeah, oh, thanks. Good good. <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us today, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to share your experiences working with influencers. And uh, I know it's been really useful both with people live here today, several hundred we've had, and people asking questions, and also also for the hundreds of others who are going to watch the replay and watch the YouTube. So really appreciate it. And uh, thanks a lot. And cool. next up, we are going to be talking TikTok ads. We're moving into TikTok ads. Now we've done content, we've done influencers. Now we're going to move more into ads. We've got a couple of presentations. And then we've got a big panel talking all about the new TikTok ads platforms People with a lot of experience on that should be great. And then we have someone from the Guinness World of Records talking about how they've grown their channel. So Lots more to go and uh, look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again, everyone.